welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Super Kami Roo, and I'm here joined with... Mac Daddy Gene. So today we are coming at you with a game that came out this year, a couple months ago, and that we both have fallen in love with. Resident uh, Evil 2 Remake. Hold up. No, that is completely wrong. It did not come out this year. It did not come out a couple months ago either. I was thinking Resident Evil 3. What? I was thinking about Resident <laughs> Evil 3. You said Resident <laughs> Evil 2! I know. But I was like, oh yeah, what? Re- I just thought of a Resident Evil game that came out this year. Anyways, Resident Evil 2 that came out within the last year that we both got recently. No, um, again, we- wrong. You got it like December of, la- of 2019. Fuck. And welcome back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So you both play Resident Evil 2. We both kind of finished the game. I say kind of because I I got confused at one part. But anyway, Gene, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, so uh, the reason Will let me take it over is because he says that if this podcast does well well enough, I can promote my, I'll be promoted from intern to head staff writer. So I want to tell your friends, like the video, give it some feedback, say... We want Mac Daddy Gene, head staff writer. I don't even know if that's a real title. And but, also, it, write We Want um, Mean Gene if you don't want Mac Daddy Gene, to, if you want to be fired. And as Will said, we're here to talk about Resident Evil 2, the, re, the remake, remake that came out in 2019. Everyone just calls it Re2. No one really says that. It's kind of just a shorthand for typing. And Will loves his shorthands. <laughs> No one's no one's out here. Hey, you played new Wii too? Yeah. What does it even mean? Too. Do I like like midgets jacking me off? I wonder what that feel like. Anyways, we're keeping that in. <laughs> but yeah, so the a little backstory about it. Well, not about the game, but about me and Will. We don't. Well, I know for me personally, I don't. I don't like horror movies. I don't play horror games or anything. Or thrillers. Right. Well, thrillers. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess that too. Because It 2, I wasn't... Again, It 2 was... Would you count It 2 as a thriller or horror? I count it as a borderline comedy. <laughs> it kind of is. I'll give it that. But um, in terms of games right now, this will be my first horror game. Um, will got it back in December of 2019. And he's been playing it. And whenever I come over and I see him playing it, I'm like, this game looks terrifying, but at the same time... Like, it looks gorgeous. Like, the zombies look really good. The characters look good. The girls and look good. I was saving that for last, but, you know, <laughs> that too. But, and not only to that to boot, but for the few times I did see Will play in it, the story also looked pretty compelling. Like, it wasn't just a normal zombie game. It's also a puzzle game, which puzzle games is what I'm kind of into. So when Will was talking about it, hyping it up, and I know Resident Evil 3 came out in March of 2020. Yes. And I was already looking for new stuff to play during quarantine. So Will kind of inspired me to get the game because he was like, oh, you know, I want to try different games. So he's been going out getting racing games and horror games, thriller games, whatever. And I was like, okay, I should probably do the same. So I picked up Resident Evil 2. And we both... I just want to say, I didn't inspire you. I kept telling you to buy the game. (laughs) I was like, Gene, I was telling everyone. I mean, I really fell in love with this game early on. I was telling everyone who played games, like, you have to get this game. It was, I, it's an amazing game to play. Yeah, but you, look, the reason I really wanted to get it was because I was like, well, if Will can handle it, I probably could too. <laughs> so, but I got it, like, way after him too. Because he got, because I got it in April of this year. Yeah, recently. So, right. Be... And you beat it first too. <laughs> yeah, cause I the first time I played it, cause I bought it and my internet's slow here, so I went and took a nap, woke up at like midnight, and that was like my first time playing it, like in my dark room at midnight playing it. And I think I could only handle about like I only handled like forty five minutes before I was like scared out of my mind. Mind you, I didn't do anything for that first forty minutes. Like we're in the main hall. And I was just walking around the whole entire thing. And I had my headset on. So every time the wood creaked, I'm just like, 
the footsteps were creeping me out. I'm like, who the fuck is that? And I'm like, oh, it's just my own footsteps. So it was like a really anxiety-inducing time. And as time went on, I would, I would play it and I would try. Because Will, Will and I wanted to do this podcast for a while. So I had to motivate myself to do an hour a week. And that was the homework Will gave me. <laughs> and I was doing it to a point where I actually stopped getting scared of it. Because it was into my third week of doing mm-hmm. it like that. And I was like, I think I can keep going. And I just eventually kept going. Went through the whole game, and I did beat it. Um, you want to talk about your experience real quick with the with yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you be it first because you're more of a binge gamer than I am, especially when it comes to story-based games. Because I, I only like to play story-based games for maybe like an hour. I, more than that, it's too much for me. Like you said, um, you played Persona 5, Dragon uh, Kakarot, and this. You would play for hours on the main campaign. I can't do that. That's That's beyond me. So I'll give you kudos to that. So I got the game in December, and I played a little bit of it the first night I got it. Uh, maybe like Gene, like about it, like the same, like the uh, first 40 minutes. And I was so terrified that I didn't play the game again for like three months. <laughs> it was the quarantine that got me back into it. But I, I was blown away when I first got it by the graphics. And I love the gameplay. Like, I'm not really into the story, the puzzle. But we'll get into that in a minute. That whole aspect. I liked more of, like, the thriller aspect. Like, creeping in the halls. I like the, um... I love games where, like, you have to kind of pay attention to your inventory. So, you know, I, I have my box. You have the box in the game where you're keeping your gunpowder to make bullets. Your bullets, your different gun types. Different herbs you can use to make medicine. Objects you need in the game. I love that part of the, as- the aspect of the game. And I love that you have a limited inventory on you. So you have to be like, okay, I need to take just the bare essentials. So I love that. I love the thriller part a lot. I, it, I loved it, but I also hated it. I was This game scared the shit out of me. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter how many times I played the same part. Because, you know, you die maybe like once or twice in the game. Well, at least I did. But I, even if I knew what was coming, I'd still get that jump scare. They would get me all the time. And when you're not paying attention, and you don't really like, like, I'm, like let's say I'm walking down a hall. And, you know, I'm kind of not paying attention. I didn't, I sometimes I played headphones, sometimes I didn't. And then, like, I, maybe I'll mistake, like, I haven't noticed a zombie uh, in the crack of the wall or something, or crawling on the floor. And they do that little scene where, like, the zombie gets you and bites in you. Ooh! Oh, my lord! <laughs> my heart <laughs> skipped a beat any time that happened. But I did love the game. But, Gene, uh, you had some problems with my gameplay. So let's just get into it. Let's just, let's just address the uh, issue. Well, I didn't know if you wanted to address it that quickly. But... All right, well, if we're going to talk about... So Will played the entire game with the brightness on max. That's Do not... you know what that means? That means for the entire game, you're just seeing a white tint. So he's... I, I'm, I'm upset because the game is gorgeous, but that <laughs> white tint you're getting at max brightness, and anyone who's a gamer knows what the fuck that looks like. We put that game on bright, white, bright uh, brightness on max. It just looks bad and to him it's just like yeah it is cool and i'm like no bro that's not cool like you ruined the whole beauty of the game how can you play like that and honestly i i looked at it like when they gave me a chance to change the brightness i looked at it and i was like i don't even know if this really does a difference this still is gonna scare me shitless regardless and it's not really gonna help me see anything if anything all this white tint is just gonna annoy the shit out of me so i don't know how he played like that well that was- it might in my defense, and you know this, I do that for every game I play. It doesn't matter what game I play. When you are when you're in the beginning and it's like adjust the brightness and there's the three like boxes or whatever, and it's like can see, can kind of see, you shouldn't be able to see this. I make sure I can see that you can't be able to, you shouldn't be able to see this. I make sure I see it. I want to see what's there. But why? There's like like the majority of the games you play. Like I said, isn't this like your first horror game? What other game are you playing that's so dark they need to have the brightness at max? No, it's not. It's just the way I play games. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I don't know. I don't know what got me into it, but I do that for all my games. Well, I hate to tell you this, but you're playing it wrong. Why don't you try like doing a regular brightness to see how that works out for you? 
Believe me, it's much better. Cause didn't um um the the fourth gray boy what was his name again? Uh, I, I can't remember, uh, but we'll call him Joe. Yeah. He 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 brought it up to you too about your brightness. No one listens to Grey Boy number four. Well, everyone better get used to it soon. But it's just it, it's it's a weird thing to just walk in and be like, yo, what the fuck's wrong with your screen? And it's like, oh no no no, that's that's just how you play it, which <laughs> is kind of off. Um. Any other? Well, he Will isn't big. Like, he said it himself. He's not big on the whole puzzle aspect of it. Yeah. So, but for the puzzles, he kind of just was watching it, like a walkthrough on one screen and him doing the walkthrough side by side. <laughs> And I feel like that just kind of ruins it. Because wouldn't you know where, like, when all the jump scares are happening? Like, wouldn't you just, like, ready yourself for that? Like, how is the gameplay for you knowing, like, oh, you saw this guy have to go through it, but then you know you have to come into it next? Gray Boy Dose, didn't you hear what I said earlier in this podcast? The jump scares still got me. I, I don't know what I'm saying. I feel like if you know it's coming, then is it even really a jump scare? I got anxiety from watching other people play the game. That was another thing. I came in. I came into playing Resident Evil 2 like this isn't gonna be that bad. I watch a lot of people play horror games. I've watched Slender Man. I've watched Five Nights at Freddy. I've watched uh, the Resident Evil 3 playthroughs, and I'm just like, none of this is doing anything for me. It really is just a different environment when you're playing it yourself, when you're in control. So I, I had to give Will an apology. Because he used to tell me how scary the game was. Mm. And I didn't believe him. I kind of chalked it up to him being a little bitch. But when I started playing it, I was like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. And I apologize. Night, like, I remember that night one, you were messaging me. Like, this game's actually really scary, man. I'm sorry. I was like, I fucking told you. <laughs> and I did feel like a bitch only because, like I said, I, I was in the main hall. Like, I think at that point, we, we get past the tutorial... And in the main hall, it was like the safe zone for the first quarter of the game, first half of the game. Yeah. So you didn't have to worry about any zombies in there. But it was like every sound scared the shit out of me. And that's not even the worst. So for me, here, like, here's how I played it. So at the beginning, I was like a scared little bitch. Like I would just like walk. I would walk everywhere and just constantly left, right, left, right. And if I saw a zombie on the floor... I'd give him one shot in the head, see if he got up, and then once I see, and he started moving, I'd start unloading the clip. And <laughs> like Will said, like you have limited ammo and limited inventory, so you need to be really careful with it. Um, another thing to mention, Will played on a different difficulty than me. He played yes. it on assisted, which means that the enemies take less hits. I mean, take less. You take. You need to shoot them le- less times. And they give you a lot more ammo. But for my gameplay, I did it on normal, and they had a normal amount of health. I think, I think for me, it just took one extra shot, and I didn't have aim assist. But I remember Will said aim assist is kind of wonky, so it kind of like yeah, I, messed with him. Yeah, I really hated the aim assist because it would... So it would the best thing to do is to shoot them in the head. Mm-hmm. And for me, I would shoot them in the head, and then I'd immediately go to shoot them in the head again. Because you're supposed to shoot them, the first shot makes them stagger back, and you're supposed to shoot them when their head goes back to fully knock them over. Because if their head goes front again, you have to do it all over again, and it takes more shots. So when I would do that, the aim assist, when he's like going, like stuttering backwards, it would be like swirl- swiveling. And I would, I would never get the shot off, so I, I hated the aim assist on that. And the other difference is... Um, for me, the zombies, if I went into a room and I killed them, they'd get back up. Sometimes for you, they just stay dead. Yeah, they would stay dead the whole time. Yeah. So I, I didn't get that. When Will said, oh, they're going to come back, I was like, fuck, there's like a lot of them here. Like, this is annoying. And then I would I would go like another hour or two in the game, and they're still dead. I'm like, are you sure? Like, none of them are coming back. Yeah. Um, for me, I could be in the room, shoot them in the head, and a couple seconds later, they'll get back up. I'm like, god damn. But... In terms of assisted, the only thing that I really think was just like a major difference was the ammo. Because we got when I got to my first boss fight, like I ran out of ammo and Will was like, What the fuck are you doing? Like I was already like I had like all types of ammo. Like and I'm just like, bro, like these people like way harder. So the first boss took a while and 
but like what I was saying is like the first quarter of the game, I would walk walk everywhere, and I got to a point where it just was too scary. But I was also getting annoyed with myself because I'm like, this is taking way too long to watch my character walk, and sometimes nothing would happen. Like they would do like a little jump scare, and like there's a zombie at the window, but he's not coming in, or I was just going down a hallway and nothing's happening. So I started running everywhere, and that was it, it was good and bad. Because when you already have a run and start, the zombies can't catch you. But sometimes you like run and make a turn, and there's a zombie and just bites you. And like, I kind of deserve that. Uh, I want to say for the gameplay, I do enjoy the fact that you can go anywhere you want. Because you're in a police station, and you have to go back. You, like you go in one part of the game, and you need like a valve or something, but you don't have that yet, so you have to go somewhere else. But you have to remember you need the valve there. Go somewhere else. They gotta come back. They need something else. I really enjoy that. And since we had to do that so many times, me and Will pretty much know know the whole map. So if anyone were to call us and ask us like, "Hey, what do I do here?" Oh, you have to go take. You have to go to the second floor from this area and go into this room and put that in. Because we've done it. We had to run around this whole place. And like, this game also like has you play the game multiple times to get different experiences. So at a certain point, you're just like running the map. You're like, okay, I, like you could start the game and like I know the whole layout of where I have to go, and you could just cut everything down in time. Like I need, I need to go, I need to go down this hallway. It's the safest hallway, and in that room because I need to get that to go. There. You, you really have to memorize the map. But the map in the game is good too, though, because like it like lists where things are when you walk by them. Right. So as you go through the game, you kind of get a handle of the zombies. So the zombies are just like, okay, so I'll deal with you here, deal with, deal with you there. The zombies are more or less pretty easy, but I don't know if you had this problem, but whenever the zombies were coming after me, they would always have their hands up like they're reaching for me, but their hands were covering their face. So every time I, I was aiming for a headshot, it would just blow off their arm. And I'd just be like, what the fuck? Like, I'd wasted a, a shot on your arm. Oh, but, I never noticed that. Yeah, I, mean, at least just, I think that happened to me at least a lot. But, that's what you're so good at the game. <laughs> so it got to a point where zombies are like, whatever. But then came, like, the main troublemaker. Well, uh, before we get into that, I do I like that about the game, is that when you first start playing the game, you have the zombies. And for a while, you're like, oh my god, these things are fucking, like, they make you feel tense when you're playing it. And then you're like, well, I know the zombies aren't going to catch me. I know how to play the game now. They're nothing. So then they throw at you the um, uh, ones with the tongues. Liquors. The liquors. And then it's like, oh shit, now there's something new that I have to worry about. And then as you go on, you get better weapons. And you're like, you know what? Now they're not a problem. Then they throw at you the dogs. So I do like how the game, the enemies are kind of always evolving with your level of difficulty and progression through the game. So, and But everything is always still a danger to you. Like no matter at what point of the game you are, zombies could still kill you. But, but you don't, you're not as worried about them as you, as you were when you first started the game. And I like that about the game. Right, so I would say it's like Will said. The game does evolve as you get better weapons and everything. But there's one zombie, or I don't even know if he's a zombie. They call him Tyrant, Mr. X. So he's a real issue, really, around the game. And I'm going to pass this off to Will, because he was looking up all the... He, he knows more about Mr. X. I am the Resident Evil lore master now. I gave myself that title when I actually looked it in the background of all the characters. <laughs> and I started doing research. So, you first experience your first tyrant in Resident Evil 1. And so the backstory is basically, you know, Raccoon City, you have Umbrella, they're messing around with this virus. And sometimes, and for most people, I've got the percentage, like 90, like 8% of people, the virus turns you into a zombie. For, but for that very special rare few, it can give you, like, physically make you physically enhanced which is what a tyrant is mr x so they call them all tyrants and so i believe there are six of them this is like the lord now it's not this is not even the game but it's like explains what what he's doing there in the game so so i just want to add before i give it back to gene i think mr x is better than nemesis as a villain in the game however nemesis is a hundred times cooler than mr x Wait, I'm sorry. You need to back that up. You're saying that you think 
I think Mr. X in, is a better villain. I think the uh, the play style. So I guess we can talk about that now quickly. So Mr. X chases you throughout the game, and anywhere you go, he goes. So okay. all the safe before, before he continues, when he says chase, it's just a it's just he has his own theme song. I mean theme music, and he's just walking. He's not running. He's walking. In fact, even Will taught me a secret of how to get past him. You fake him out. You walk near him, back up, and just go around. So Chase yeah. is... When he swings, you run right underneath him. But also, I'm going to correct you there. He does run at one point. If you shoot his hat off, he does not like that. He likes that hat. So if you shoot his hat off, he'll do a quick charge at you. I think that's like the only time he runs. I don't know if I ever noticed that. You know what? Here's what happened. So, like, when I shot his hat off, and he did kill me, it was a messy death, too. Like, he fucking curb stomped my face because I was already low health. I just turned the game off. I was like, okay, whatever. Oh, God, yeah, I've done that, too. <laughs> like, that's it for me. Because also, a big factor of the game and getting into the ranks is the time. So if you were to die and then, like, tell the game continue, it's still continuing that time from when you died. Not and how many save. times you save? No, it doesn't factor that. I told you this already. <laughs> it could. We don't know that for sure. But, right, so throughout the police station, once you're pretty much good and, like, anyone, no, no zombie or even a liquor is a threat, you, he just shows up. And the scene where he shows up wasn't even all that scary, to no. be honest. I mean, the first time he, like, they gave him, like, a hint was when he broke through a wall and squished the reporter's head. Just his hand broke through the wall. So he just put his fist through a wall and just dragged some reporter up while he's also, like, his arm is just going through the wall and he just, like, crushes his head with his hand. Right. And then after that, the, when you finally see him in his full glory, it's just, there's no place to advance in the game. There's, like, a burned helicopter in the way. And then he just lifts it up. And then, like, when he showed up, it, for me, it was really anticlimactic. Like, it didn't really do anything for me. I was like, oh, okay. And then I started shooting him. I was like, oh, he's not going down. So I just ran out into this open area and saw him walking all very casually and i just juked him went around and was like okay cool and this is where i got really fucked up because for the entire game the main hall was like the safe area and i was like okay so i'm good and here's this seven eight foot guy ducked down through the door theme music playing footsteps and it i was like okay so the safe area is gone and i for me i i, I did quit for i it was like an, it was like a week because I, I still had my homework for one hour a week but i gave it up because i was like well now i have to solve all these puzzles go around the entire police station worried about zombies any liquors i didn't kill and now this guy who won't die and it was later on will told me oh don't worry like if you hit him enough times he'll go down yeah for like a minute or whatever he'll and just I was like, right and i was like okay cool but it took a lot like it took a lot like he like to get him to stop, it, it took a, a lot of bullets. And I would, like, run out. To the Even headshots. It took a, quite a few headshots to get him stunned. He I was think, a bullet sponge. I think the best bet was that acid rounds. When not even... Well, yeah, for the Claire run. Yeah. For Leon, it was the Lightning Hawk. And this might be a little confusing, but um, you do play the game as two different people. Yeah. You can, you can decide who you choose as first. Me and Will played as Leon first. And then we went into Claire. So speaking about Leon and Claire and who you could choose, we I I cho why did you choose Leon first? Honestly, I just thought that was the main character. I, I thought like it was, he was the main story and Claire was like side story. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not like sexist or anything. It's just we really like we anytime no. we saw the cover and we heard of Resident Evil Two, we always heard about Leon. I heard about Claire too, but I thought he was like she was just like DLC side character stuff, but you know. Apparently, she was just an equal part of the story. I mean, I he's mean, kind of front and center on the cover. He's front and center. And even playing through Claire's story, I feel like Leon's are still main. Well, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'll defend that even more. Leon is the main character because Leon, like, he's constantly showing up in the games, movies, like, all media. It's always Leon as one of the main characters. He's, he's a, people really like him. Not that I they think, don't like Claire. It's just that people really like Leon. I think Claire came back in a couple of games, too. 
Because yeah. I looked up the lore for every for the entire franchise after I beat Resident Evil 2, of course. Because I was just I was just like, this is like a really good lore story. Um, but we're gonna talk about the characters now for a little bit. So first we have Leon. This is his first. Well, he was supposed to start work in Raccoon City as a police officer, and on the first day of the job. Zombie apocalypse. How old do you think Leon's supposed to be? I would say. I, I feel like they want. I feel like they want to portray him as like an early twenty. Like this is my first job, but he looks like he's fucking thirty-five. <laughs> really? For me, he, look, he looked like twenty-seven. Me. Really? Yeah. Well, you're looking at some Chad twenty-seven-year-olds then a lot during the day. <laughs> I thought he like, cause I was very confused. It's like, I thought he was like a cop transferring, and then I was like, no, 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 it's my first day as a cop. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, how I mean, old are you? That's something we could easily check, but I mean, I, hmm. it's too easy to check. That's why I refuse to do it. <laughs> and who do we have? I'm trying to go by all the characters in terms of meeting in Leon. So, so we'll have to talk about Claire, Marvin oh, yeah. Branna. I don't have Branna. I think is his last name. Marvin Brenner, yeah. He's the wow, cop. You did your research. I did, yeah. So he's the he's the cop that you first meet in the game. So he's an injured cop you meet. In the original game, he has like a quick like one second scene where he hands you something and he dies. But in this game, he's like a really important character. They kind of sad when he dies. Because he's helping you out. He saves your life at one point. And throughout the game, you meet him, he's been bitten. So as time goes on, you can see he's uh, physically getting weaker and weaker, and you know he's going to die eventually. And then finally he dies. And you, you hesitate when you pull the trigger when you have to kill him. Right? Did Maybe. you hesitate? He wouldn't go down. He kept coming back up. Oh. So that was heart-wrenching. Maybe you had a bad, bad aim. Or maybe you just you couldn't do it, so you just kept missing. Like, God damn. Don't make me do it, Marvin. <laughs> and then the next person you meet is William Birkins, who's like... The half, the, the kind of the first boss fight you have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you learn about him throughout the game. He's not, he's, you can, it's his character is whatever. It's just like a story element. It's, he's all right. Then, though, woo! Boner alert, everyone. You meet one, I don't know if it's, is it Ada or Ada? It's Ada, right? I think she says Ada. Okay. Ada Wong. And she is the baddest bitch in this game. Whew. And she, she wears. She takes that coat off. I, okay, so she wears a trench coat with big glasses, like sunglasses. And you're like, I can nut to this. And then she takes off the coat, and she's wearing a sexy little red cocktail dress. <laughs> and you're like, okay, now I need to look up the art. Gene, cue the art on the screen. <laughs> and she's a very interesting character. So her character is simply. She tells you that she's working for the FBI trying to take down the people who made this virus, and she wants you to help her. Well, she doesn't want you to help her, but she kind of does. She's, like, tricking you into helping her. Because later you find out she's actually working for Umbrella, or a rival company, to just steal the, um, the T-virus, the, thing that, or the G-virus, the thing that makes, that's making the zombies, and sell it off as, like, a weapon of mass destruction. Or buy uh, a BWMD or something like that? Yeah. So, and there's, like, a lot of sexual tension between her and Leon. But I want to say that for the end too. Um I didn't I didn't notice any of that sexual tension. I guess I was too busy still having my heart rate up for the zombies, but maybe. I had, my, to... I had huh? my heart rate up and let me just say the blood was pumping because of it. <laughs> <laughs> then we had the wife of William Annette Birkins. Right. She's just another story element. She's more important in Claire's story than his. Right. So after that, yeah, we just we we'll just go to Claire. Yeah, just like side? yeah, that's pretty much it. So for Claire, she's um going to Raccoon City to find her brother, who's a um star, who's like a special forces policeman in Raccoon City, and she meets Leon on the way, and then they get separated, and then so the gameplay for both characters is the same. Like slightly the same with like some differences. So Claire, you're also meeting Marvin again. You're meeting William and Annette Birkins again. But for her, uh, her major storyline is Sherry Birkin, who is the daughter, like a child, the child of Annette and William. She's like a grade school, I'd say. And so you're constantly trying to protect her during the story. 
because she's a woman and she needs has to have has to have, has to have motherly instincts. <laughs> Leon's too badass. He wouldn't have cared about the kid. <laughs> and so, like, you kill the guy who's taking care of Sherry because he's maybe abusing her. Brian Irons. The police and... chief? No, no, no. The um, that caretaker in the orphanage. The dude who kidnapped Sherry. The fat yeah. old guy. Who's bald. Yeah, yeah. Poli- he was the police chief. He was the police chief. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've... Yeah, I miss I'm I missed that somehow. So you fight him. The only real characters and for Claire that you have to know about are uh Annette and Sherry, because you get to know them more. Right. But there's not that much to say about them besides like um Claire. So she's kinda like the girl next door type of character. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, like she's, just she's trying to do the good thing the right thing. Yeah. The whole time I was playing the game, I was like, she's way too like chill and normal to like know how to use a gun like that like she just went in using a revolver and they gave her they gave her a submachine gun and leon got what did leon get instead of a submachine leon gun? got a shotgun and like right. a heavy duty handgun she got a grenade launcher <laughs> and the submachine gun but in the original game she didn't have a grenade launcher she had like a bow and arrow like a crossbow oh. which i thought was weird i only know that because my uncle had a toy of hers, and I have it too somewhere, and it's like her in her like, classic outfit with the crossbow. So I was wondering what, like, when she got that in this game, and she never did. Okay. So we both did beat the game. I have, I have, I have all our stats here, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go over it really quickly. So Will started the game <laughs> December 27th of 2019. And I have these exact numbers because we would talk about it a lot. And he beat the game in terms of Leon and Claire's story. Because there were also some side mission, like time attack trial games. But we didn't play that. That's not part of the main story. Yeah. So, but he will beat the game May 31st of 2020. So for... That, that's a speed run, right? That's a speed run record? If that's a speed, if that's speed run record, then look at mine. I started the game April 17th of 2020. And beat it May 11th of 2020. I bet you used hacks, mods to help you none, beat it faster. None whatsoever. Oh, but I do have to say, did you know that if you beat the game fast enough on the hardest difficulty, you they they give you a cheat for infinite ammo? Really? Oh, yeah, that's cool. I kind I kind of want to go for that, but I don't know if I could beat that time. You have to be in like three hours or something, three hours and thirty minutes. But let's get into the stats. So for William. Super Kami Will. For his Leon playthrough, it was 7 hours, 52 minutes, and 54 seconds. Yay! <laughs> we love you, William! With 62 saves. Nice. I was... Oh, uh, math. Crap. Uh, 4 away from order 66, and 7 away from order 69. Boom. Had to bring up the Star Wars reference. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he got a rank B, which is Woo, based B for best. So, solely on time. Claire, for his Claire playthrough, did it a little better. He got, he beat it in five hours, eight minutes, and 23 seconds. You, I could have knocked off an hour. I was so lost playing a Sherry. I got caught so many. I was, I didn't know how to uh, get past the, like her caretaker. The Yeah, the, the Sherry part did fuck me up. Yeah. So there's a part... Oh, well, you know, leave that out. That's but. whatever, yeah. Um, and 13 saves. Very yeah. surprised. Low saves. Oh, once I got to the underground facility, I didn't save the whole game until the end. <laughs> I was like, if I die, I die. I can't do this. I just played, I just did the whole game in one sitting. So, yeah. And with that, Will also received a B. A B. Right past. Yay. I'll take that loud noise outside as a fireworks for me. <laughs> Better than loud noise outside my doors, which could, which could be gunshots. Next. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, my Leon playthrough was seven hours. Boo, boo, boo. Hey, give him a chance, guys. <laughs> seven <laughs> hours, 37 minutes, and 16 seconds. Well, who beat it faster? I did. Uh-huh. With no side-by-side play playthrough. And 19 saves, which is significantly different from the 62 saves of Will. Or Claire. 
the clear playthrough will more or less he I, I got kind of beat with Claire. Like it was I thought I thought I'd do better in with Claire. So for thought? My, what do you think? There are numbers in front of you. It's concrete. Who did no, better? No, I was saying while I was playing, I uh-huh. thought I would have done better, but uh-huh. Will beat me. But I'm gonna explain how he beat me and how it's wrong. So uh-huh. for my, like my grade, I'm b b better. <laughs> <laughs> so for Claire, I beat it in five hours, forty-four minutes, and eight seconds. Did you fall asleep with the keyboard? I, I played on PS4 actually. Oh. And I had 17 saves. 17? Woo! Someone was a coward. What the fuck? You did 62 for Leon! Yeah, well, I didn't know how to play the game then. <laughs> I didn't know either! I still had yeah, 19. Yeah, you saw me play. You, you, you knew. And I got a rank of C. Ooh! But, 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 Will cheated. I'm going to print my report card out and put it on my, my refrigerator. Will cheated because to get the different ranks of the game depending on if you do it as if you play the game as first run and second run. So for the first run, for you to get like A rank, you had to for the first run, you had to get, beat the game in less than five hours. Then for the second run, you had to beat the game in less than four hours. So he was on a different curve than me because I was playing it as second run. If Will had done second run like he's supposed Listen, to, I didn't. I didn't want to get the top score because I didn't want Gene to like. I didn't want the gap to be too much, you know. Like I, I want to make Gene like you know. Hey, but you know what? Because of Will's folly, he did not even get the secret ending of the yeah. game. Yeah. So I, I can explain that. Uh, so the way the game works is you beat one. You play as one character. You beat story A, and then you play as character two and you beat story b i was under the impression you're supposed to play as a for both characters and then play as b for both characters so that was just it like i was just like oh okay i'll, I'll play as claire then i'll go back and do it again and then she was like no 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 no, you have to do it and i was like oh shit i messed up but it was like it was an odd mistake i didn't i no, the, the game doesn't tell you that really yeah i'll 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 defend him for that because after i beat the game as leon they were like, oh, you know, here, play, you unlock the second run now. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't want to do the second run because I thought it was going to be a new game plus as Leon. So I was going to do I was gonna do the same thing Will did and just do a, a whole new game and play it as Claire. But something told me, wait, what would a new game plus even look like at, in, um, for Leon? Because are they going to give me all my items or am I going to have a full um, inventory? And I went to go check, and they were like, okay, do you want to play the second one? Well, then it automatically just puts you in as Claire. But they don't give you the option Leon and Claire. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'm supposed to do this to have to continue it off. So I was like, all right. So, But I'll give him, I'll give him credit for not knowing that. But I have to know. Are you going to do the Are you gonna do the second run thing, or you're just going to yes. let the grand in? Uh, I'll probably do the second run for both of them. I feel bad for you, because I will never play Resident Evil again. What about three? I've I've seen way too many playthroughs of it. Yeah, doesn't look as good. And yeah, it doesn't look as scary. Cause mm-hmm. e- even for me, once you get to the umbrella f- uh, facility, it wasn't that scary. No, yeah, it really wasn't. That that um, umbrella facility, I kind of ran through it, especially mm-hmm. as Claire. Like that was even shorter. Mm-hmm. And so the as everyone, I don't know if anyone know everyone knows, but this is a remake of the original 1998 game. And Will does did his research, being a very studious podcaster, and knows all the differences from the original. So you can go on and let our viewers know. Welcome to the My Williams Academia corner of the podcast. The differences from Resident Evil 2 and Re2, as everyone says out loud with words. <laughs> and I was going to do like a quick like fire. Almost like an information corner. In Resident Evil 2, the knife that you use is infinite. It never dulls. However, in Resident Evil 2 Remake... I fucked that up. God damn it. <laughs> the, um, you, the knife dulls after like a few hits. So you're const- Like with uh, your bullets, you have to be like, okay, like, I have a knife. How many times can I stab someone before I have to just throw it away? And then you have to keep finding knives. And I think there are different types of knives too. That like last longer. 
Another thing is the gunpowder. In the original game, you would just find bullets. Uh, this is maybe my favorite thing about Re2, is that so you find gunpowder and different types of gunpowders, and then you can make bullets depending on what you choose to make. So let's say you have like a uh, hundred handgun ammo, and I want like shotgun ammo. So I can mix and match certain types of gunpowder to make shotgun ammo. I love that about the game. It was like a neat thing that I, I've, I haven't really had in the game play before. In Resident Evil 2, you could board up the windows that the zombies come out in. I kind of like this in the original game, but they don't do it in the remake. So in the original Resident Evil 2, so you're playing as so each store you're playing kind of simultaneously as the characters running around the the PlayStation. In the original Resident Evil 2, there's a limited amount of resources. So if you pick everything up as Leon, then you leave nothing for Claire to pick up. Wow. Yeah. I was like, that's fucking interesting. Because not only do you have to play as Leon and manage what you have, you have to be like, oh, I have to make sure I leave some shit for later when I do um, Claire's playthrough. So I, I thought that was actually really neat. And I kind of wish it did that, but I also know I'd, it'd be such a hassle. It would 100%, especially the way you hoard your stuff. No, that'd be horrible. I hate yeah. that. Don't owe. I remember when you told me about how you used to keep all these knives. Bro, homie would not use a knife at all. It, no. it, for me, it was pretty much like I, I kept one on me all the time just to like stab anyone away, the liquors or zombies or whatever. If you went in my box, you would think I was the joker with how many knives I freaking kept in there. I had like at one point I had like six or seven knives that were just completely unused and I refused to use them <laughs> in case I ever needed them in the future. <laughs> I always kept, I always tried to keep a knife on me. I almost never put knives away. Uh, like this is kind of funny. I it's more has to do with the times. In the original game, when you went in between rooms, it would be a loading screen like a, like to open the doors. Because they just needed loading screens back then to do things like that. So all the zombies would just stop. And they would, you just wouldn't see them again. But in this game, in some of the places, if you go through a door, the zombies follow you. And I was like, that's, that's just kind of funny with how, it's like, you know, like how technology's changed since back then. Uh, for this game, I wouldn't mind if they kept it like the old way. Because sometimes I would walk into a room. And if I'm low health and I just ran in there, there's a zombie. Cornered me. I'm like, where the fuck am I supposed to go? This door is locked. You're blocking the only exit. I'm fucking dead if I go past you. Yeah. Uh, another new thing that we have is, um, I mentioned before, they replaced Claire's bowgun with a grenade launcher, which is kind of interesting because that was kind of her, her iconic weapon, was the bowgun. So, bold choice. I guess I just figured, like, it's kind of stupid that she has a bowgun. It doesn't make much sense. It would be kind of weird to find bowgun ammo. Yeah. Actually, I think it, it's kind of weird to find all that grenade ammo, too. In this game, if you want to talk about it quickly, we, you could play as Sherry, the kid. Oh, that wasn't in the original? No, it wasn't. It was a pretty good addition. I'll give it that. I mean, it was, it was, it was like a little break. It adds to the lore. So <laughs> otherwise, I kind of hated playing as it. <laughs> it. It got it got tired quick. Yeah, but, I like it wasn't long, but it was still too long. But you know what? For me, it kind of gave me peace because I was like, they're not going to put me against any zombies. So I'm going to be fine. So I had a peace of mind during playing for. Yeah. Another thing is in this game, uh, you play the game with, in, in most places, especially the PlayStation, you have to play it in complete darkness with a flashlight. And you can kind of see things. In the old game, just everything was lit. There was no dark places. Really? Yeah. Okay, I got it. Which so, severely takes away, like, the suspense, like, that, like the, horror, the, the, um, the thrill aspect of the game, I thought. And then the last thing, which is kind of silly... But um, a lot of people complained about was there were no moth or big spider battles. Because <laughs> in the original game, you'd like walk in this room and there'd be like a giant moth in the room. I can do without it, believe me. Yeah, they it was... had already it was scary enough. Yeah, but you kind of want like I can imagine like a giant infected moth. How scary that it would look in this game with these graphics. And we should also talk about all the costumes. Yes. So, um, so each character for Leon and Claire have multiple costumes. Uh, you, so Leon, you start in civilian clothes, 
And you can never put them back on, except for, like the beginning of the game. And then when you get to the police station, you switch to the police station outfit. And for Claire, you have her regular clothes. When you beat the game, you get their original Resident Evil 2 costumes. So it's Leon, it's like a a different police like outfit. And for Claire, you have her iconic like red almost jumpsuit. <laughs> like I don't know how to describe her outfit. But I'm I'm bummed that you can't play with the outfits the first time you play the game. Cause I would really like to switch back and forth between them. I mean you're you are you are gonna have a chance and you gotta play it again. Yeah, that's that is true. And then if you buy the deluxe version of the games, they each so Leon gets two additional costumes and Claire gets three. And it's kind of shitty because Leon's costumes are pretty fucking cool. Claire's all suck. So Leon, you get the um you get his Noir outfit, and then you get his sheriff outfit. And I actually played a lot of the game as the sheriff. I really like the sheriff outfit. I went with Noir. For Claire, you have her Noir outfit, which is all right. It's kind of just like the rinse and repeat of Leon's Noir outfit. Then you get her sh- her soldier one, which is looks so fucking stupid. It makes no sense. It looks like she's like in the jungles of Vietnam. I fucking hated it too. It was a really bad one. <laughs> it was yeah, it was so ugly. And then the other one you get is called Elza Walker. Which I didn't know what that was, so I had to look it up. That was her original name and costume of what she was gonna look like before they made turn into Claire Redfield in the original game. Is that the is that like kind of like a it has like a biker coat? Yeah. And I again, love that costume. I didn't. It was really good. No, That's what I played I, with. I did not like it at all. I thought I thought her outfits were shitty. I thought like I just kept her regular clothes the entire time. What'd you say? I thought she was hot. Do you watch NASCAR the direction? I'm a hot blooded American. I love my cars that go vroom. Yeah, I'm not selling that one. <laughs> <laughs> um and I know this has gone long enough, but there's one last important topic to both me and Will that we want to talk yeah. about. I demanded we talk about it at the end. Because it's the thing that you all want to talk about, too, that you're mostly interested in. The love triangle. In yes. Game. So, I think based on the way you, you heard me talk about her, <laughs> I thought Ada Wong was fucking amazing. She was the baddest bitch I've seen in a video game in so long. So long. And she rocked it well. Like, she was in control of every situation. She was so fucking cool. You could play as her a little bit. I wish you could play more as her. I loved her character. The mm-hmm. only oh. thing I... So... And then you have Claire Redfield, who's kind of just, you know, the girl next door. Goody two-shoes. Well, damn. You're not going to play down my boo. All right? Listen. Claire... She's more than just the girl next door. She is waifu material. She is loyal. She is sweet. <laughs> she got mom. She got like motherly instincts. <laughs> she got maternal instincts. That is a ride or die. She Ada, comes with she comes with baggage. That baggage is a fucking 12-year-old kid. No offense to single mothers out there. <laughs> uh, in my defense, I grew up in a single mother household. This is getting too fucking real for me, bro. Um... <laughs> Oh my god. Claire Redfield sucked. She was all right. Yeah, but Adewan was the duplicitous bitch. Listen, I love Leon. He is bland as fuck. You can't have two bland characters as the main love interests. They can't work for each other. They you know what? That's the problem. Is that he needs someone to come in there and ruin his fucking life. And that name is Ada Wong. She is going to drive him down the chasing path where he's going to keep trying to go after her and she'll, she'll be just in his grip and then she just pulls away and he'll delve into alcoholism. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes in the story for him as well. And you know what? I love it. Claire Redfield's boring. And, and that's our podcast. <laughs> also, I guess you, you ship Leon and Claire? Yeah, Leon and Claire for good, forever. In fact, you know what? They are forever. Because they're still hanging out past Resident Evil 2. And where's Ada Wong? Out there being the same basic... Oh, I can't say basic. How can you say she's, that? She's a really bad yeah, bitch. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. The basic one. How yeah. can you say that? You, even, you don't know anything else about the rest of the series. Did you watch any of the movies? 
Not the I told action. you. I looked, at the, I looked at the entire lore from Resident Evil 1 to 7. I know everything is going Dude, on. Dude, Claire Redfield is chilling with her brother while Leon is going from bar to bar some uh, in a cat and mouse with um, Ada Wong. You're out of your mind. They meet up again, I think, in like Resident Evil 5 or something. But no, You're nuts. It's, everyone knows. I gotta say, though, when I was first playing the game and they kissed, it was so on left field. I was like, oh, okay. It was on the tram, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But, but you, know, think, you know, to say for Ada Wong, she is not a woman that can be tamed. Yeah. She's like the female version of Tiger King. <laughs> You, you could sit with her for a millennia and you'll never know everything about her. She's a mystery. Wrapped up in a brown coat and an even tighter red dress. I gotta say, I already know future me who's editing this. Mm-hmm. This podcast is gonna be 90% just pictures of Ada Wong. I know, obviously. I'll, I'll, and you know I'll what? I'm gonna provide all those photos. <laughs> In fact, I might have them already. Just make sure to what? Safe for work. Okay, I have to find some more photos then. So, yes, that went... I'm already an hour into recording, so that's long enough. So I'm going to end this podcast. Uh, Will, any final words? Uh, Brendan, do you want to... Do you want to give everyone your Twitch account? Or oh, he's not here. Okay. All right. So, again... We're trying to make Mean Gene, Mac Daddy Gene, head staff writer. So like this video, share with your friends, hit that notification bell. I like how you want to be head writer and I'm the one who did all the fucking research. <laughs> <laughs> and wrote it all down too. Hey, I wrote down all the numbers and the stats and everything. You wrote I them did, down. Did, you, you asked me to take pictures of them and send them to you. Yeah, but did you have them on top of your head? You know what? It doesn't matter. I, uh, it doesn't. It does not matter. We'll let the numbers speak. This will be the greatest podcast in Grey Boys history. Actually, what was it? Yeah, it's gonna be even B Rads, Brendan, whatever we're calling him. <laughs> and we are. This has been a great cast. <laughs> Out. <laughs>